Hundred and third, Jordan down. We got a message. We Jersey. Jersey don't love you. The New Jersey Grape Street Crips is a set of the Grape Street Crips gang that originated in the Jordan Downs public housing complex, which is located between Grape Street and 103rd Street in Watts, Los Angeles, California. The New Jersey Grape Street Crips have followed many of the same traditions and protocols of the Grape Street Crips and other Crip Street gangs. Visible demonstrations of gang affiliation, such as an identification with the colors purple and blue, which appear in clothing, hats, and bandanas worn by members, symbolic use of the number 103 including yearly celebrations on October 3rd, also styled as 10 Trey Day, in reference to the founding of the gang in LA. Greeting each other with the phrases, Watts up or Watts grop in in reference to the gang's founding in Watts, tattoos, slogans, and hand gestures signifying membership in the New Jersey Grape Street Crips, and the use of a system of rules and regulations governing admission to and membership in the New Jersey Grape Street Crips. The rules governing the New Jersey Grape Street Crips establish, among other things, a hierarchical power structure in which members are given designations or rank signifying their status within the gang, which ranks include, from senior rank to junior rank, triple OG, OG is short for original gangster, double OG, OG, G, BG4, baby gangster, followed by overseers, enforcers, and individual members, who are referred to as soldiers, a system of discipline and punishment for those members who violated rules, failed to carry out orders from higher-ups, or disrespected the gang, in which offending members members could be stripped of rank, placed on probationary status, and or physically assaulted or killed, and see a system of incentives in which members who desire to maintain, or rise in, rank and stature within the New Jersey Grape Street Crips, were five expected and required to put in work, which meant engaging in murders, shootings, physical assaults, intimidation, drug trafficking, robberies, extortion, and other criminal activities. The members of the Grape Street Crips have wreaked havoc in the city of Newark for years, by committing violent murders, shootings and drug trafficking a D-Special Agent in Charge said. Now the residents of Newark can rest easier knowing that these criminals have been convicted of these serious charges. The defendants were charged in November 2016 in a 22-count indictment charging 14 members and associates with, among other things, 6 murders, 12 attempted murders, and numerous other violent and drug trafficking crimes committed as part of the racketeering conspiracy. An additional 68 members and associates of the Grape Street Crips, who were arrested in a coordinated takedown in May 2015, were separately charged with drug trafficking physical assaults and witness intimidation. The New Jersey Grape Street Crips control drug trafficking and other criminal activities in various areas of Newark, including the area of 6th Avenue and North 5th Street and public housing complexes at Pennington Court, Oscar Miles, the Millard Push Homes, the John W. Hyatt Homes, and the former James Baxter Terrace Complex. Each of these neighborhoods and public housing complexes was controlled by a leader who was responsible for overseeing the New Jersey Grape Street Crips operations and for authorizing criminal activity on behalf of the enterprise. Gang members frequently used social media, including Instagram and YouTube, to disseminate the rules of the gang. Since early as 2003, Corey Hamlet, aka Blizzy, aka C Blazer Castor Troy, was the leader of the enterprise. He adopted the name C. Blaze due to his heavy marijuana smoking during his teenage years. He changed it to Blizzy to add a little flair. He had a future in football and earned a full scholarship to Lackawanna College. He left the team because of issues relating to the team policies. Before he knew it, he was back in the bricks. In and around 2005, Blizzy sent a conspirator one to rob several drug traffickers in the Wequahic section of Newark, New Jersey. The conspirator one and other members of the New Jersey Grape Street Crips, each of whom was armed with a firearm, robbed the drug traffickers of approximately $10,000 on Blizzy's behalf. Mac, aka, Welches, Kirton, aka, City, Stafford, aka, Stodder Homicide, and Terrell, aka Push, had the area around the Baxter Terrace on Smash. Sometime in 2006, while detained in local jails and federal prisons, Blizzy continued to serve as the leader of the New Jersey Grape Street Crips, through his trusted deputies, including Welches, who, among other things, would hold gang meetings and collect money from fellow gang members to provide to Blizzy. Blizzy also decided, among other things, which gang members would be promoted to higher ranks. 
For example, in or around this time, Lizzie had a message sent to Concepcion, aka, Wax, promoting Conspirator 1 to the rank of G. Corey Batts, aka, C Murder, was another leader of in the gang. He controlled drug trade in the Court Street location under Blizzy, specifically on Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard in Newark. He wasn't selling small quantities either. He was a major heroin distributor for the Grape Street Crips. C Murder was flipping bricks. August 14, 2006, C Murder drove Welches to a location where they spotted two rival gang members. One was a teenager, who allegedly called out for his mother before Welches shot the boy down. The person who was accompanying the boy was severely injured as well. Allegedly, the trigger-happy Welches bragged and laughed about the murder. City and Homicide sold heroin and cocaine at the James Baxter Terrace housing complex from 2003 until it was demolished in 2009. After Baxter Terrace was torn down, Stafford continued to distribute heroin and cocaine at the Winona Lipman public housing complex. Singleton, a.k.a. Gangsta Mu a.k.a. Mushi, was a member of the New Jersey Grape Street Crips who operated, among other places, in and around the 6th Avenue location, Orange, New Jersey, and Irvington, New Jersey. On or about December 21, 2009, Mushi possessed a 9mm caliber Ruger P89 semi-automatic firearm that was used in a shooting that same day. About two weeks later, while fleeing from police officers, Mushi dropped the same gun. Five days after that, Mushi hid away from cops inside a closet, in which he also had hidden a 38 caliber Smith & Wesson Model 442 revolver. Other members carried heat as well. In 2010, Blizzy received from Conspirator 3, an associate of the New Jersey Grape Street Crips, approximately 50 bricks of heroin, which he then resold for profit. Blizzy spoke with Conspirator 4 about the sale of bricks of heroin that Blizzy had received from City. In May, Blizzy began to demand that Anderson and his team make cash payments to him because he believed that associates of Anderson were responsible for shooting at him. On June 14, 2010, a 30-year-old Newark man died after being shot several times outside his clothing store in the city's South Ward. John Leroy Simmons was shot several times in the upper torso and head near Bergen Street and Clinton Avenue. Officers responded to the scene at 6.15 p.m. after receiving an alert from the shot spotter's gun detection system and several calls from residents reporting a shooting. The gunfire drew a large crowd of city residents from the nearby Clinton Arms and Oak Brook Square apartments. A couple of days later, on June 19, 2010, during a family cookout on Garside Street in Newark, Homocide confronted an individual about a drug debt. Homocyte and several other gang members left the cookout to retrieve firearms, and later returned. They fired more than a dozen shots at the person whom Homocyte originally confronted. A woman who was not involved in the dispute was standing on a nearby porch, and was shot and killed. Two other people were wounded and survived. Two days before Christmas the same year, around 6 p.m., two men were shot several times as they sat in a black sport utility vehicle at Court and Broom Streets in the Central Ward. Rodney Shaker Kearney died at University Hospital a short time later. The extent of the second victim's injuries were not immediately known. It was said that Kearney was recovering from a previous shooting just five months prior unrelated to this war. He was shot in a car, and the driver was killed. Other people were shot but survived. This time, Kearney wasn't so lucky. On October 10, 2011, during an outdoor cookout, Welches used an assault rifle to attempt to kill a fellow gang member, who had previously cooperated in a murder investigation, and whose loyalty to the gang was in question. Welches shot eight individuals at the Kemsko Village housing complex. Nobody died, but at least two suffered permanent or life-threatening injuries. What's crazy? He had been released from prison just three months before this Columbus Day shooting. After being charged by the Essex County Prosecutor's Office with the attempted murder, Welches was provided during the discovery process with the identity of the only witness against him. That witness had to go. Welches ordered fellow gang members to kill that witness. Gang members took substantial steps to carry out Welch's orders, but the murder never took place. On or about May 30, 2012, Blizzy had a telephone conversation with Welch's, who was detained, in which Blizzy stated that he would provide Welch's with money to get a lawyer, if Welch's asked Blizzy to do so. The following day, on or about May 31, 2012, Welch's had a telephone conversation in which he told Do Hi, get that shit from Wax, put that up, and grab that grand from Keem. 
basically instructing Du Hai to pick up money from Concepcion and Vanderhall to use for Welches to retain an attorney in connection with a pending criminal case. Carnegie, aka Du Hai, was a member of the New Jersey Grape Street Crips, who operated around the 6th Avenue location in Orange. At a time, he was known to keep a loaded Romer Mess A Cuger 7.62x39 assault rifle, and an American Industries Calico M100, 22 liters R carbine. In or about 2012, Lizzie received from Coconspirator 5, dozens of bricks of heroin, which Lizzie then resold for profit. Same year, Lizzie threatened Coconspirator 1 with bodily harm, because Lizzie believed that Coconspirator 1 may have been cooperating with authorities. All summer 2012, on separate occasions, Lizzie picked up the profits accumulated through crack sales from Wax and Keem. In September, Lizzie posted a photograph on social media showing his back, where Lizzie had a tattoo of, among other things, the phrase 100% grape the phrase what's up, and a hand making a New Jersey Grape Street Crips gang sign. That October, Lizzie traveled to Los Angeles to meet with members of the Grape Street Crips in Watts, Los Angeles. New York Mayor Roz Baraka, then a councilman serving as deputy mayor, recruited Lizzie to take part in an anti-gang initiative. Because of his influence of the youth that they asked him would I mind sitting on the council and to help disintegrate issues. Through Baraka, they were able to establish an organization called SOS, which stands for Saving Ourselves. The city of Newark paid for tickets to fly to the West Coast to tackle the issues dealing with the gang culture in the city of Newark. In early 2013, Lizzie allegedly authorized Tony Phillips and other gang members to murder Tarek Johnson because Johnson had grown too close to Al Malik Anderson. Chloe Jones, aka Hatman and Al Malik Anderson, operated a heroin distribution marketplace out of the first floor hallway of a residential building at 25 Johnson Avenue in Newark. The building is just a few doors away from the Malcolm X Shabazz High School and the Push James Park Playground. The conspiracy was led by them, who, along with other heroin dealers that worked with them, took advantage of the building's location on a dead-end street, making it difficult for law enforcement to infiltrate the distribution network, despite a constant stream of buyers entering the building at all hours of the day. Lookouts were paid by the defendants to alert them to any police activity coming onto the block from the only access point on Clinton Avenue. Police could not infiltrate the building without lookouts detecting their presence and signaling the sellers. Members of the drug trafficking organization also set up an escape route whereby residents were paid to keep their doors unlocked. The dealers in the hallways would run through the building and exit via fire escapes at the rear of the building, or simply hide within the apartments, before police could apprehend them. The drug conspiracy operated nearly 24 hours a day and was well known among heroin users, who came from several different counties across New Jersey. The defendants allegedly worked in carefully planned shifts in order to handle the constant flow of heroin buyers. The heroin was sold in various brands which were stamped onto the glassine envelopes that contained the heroin, allowing buyers to identify and purchase the brands that they preferred. The defendants sold on average 1 to 2 kilograms of heroin per week between January 2013 and November 2015. On or about October 7, 2013, Welches, Du Hai, Shooter, and Push sought to avenge the murder of a fellow gang member who had recently been killed by rivals. They piled into a blue 2000 Jeep Cherokee and traveled to the area of Avon Avenue in Newark, where one of them fired 14 rounds from a Ruger Model P95 DC 9mm semi-automatic pistol in an attempt to shoot members of the rival gang. After returning to their staging area after the shooting, Welches possessed the gun, and the gang fled from police officers who attempted to arrest them. Keem helped do high, shooter, and push flee from police after Welches ended up getting caught. On or about October 12, 2013, Welches, while incarcerated at the Essex County Correctional Facility, spoke by telephone with Coconspirator 9, a member of the New Jersey Grape Street Crips. During that conversation, Welches told Coconspirator 9 that Du Hai, Shooter, and Push had to be punished by physically assault because none of them had helped him flee from or fight the police officers who had arrested him. Welches specifically instructed Coconspirator 9 to inform Blizzy that these gang members had to be disciplined. About a day later, he spoke to them three directly, letting them know how he felt about the situation. During that call, Welches told Du Hai that officials at the Essex County Correctional Facility were not going to house Welches on the tier designated for Crip gang members because he had too much influence. 
Du Hai confirmed that Blizzy had been informed that Welch's Du Hai, Shooter, and Push had retaliated against others for the murder of Co-Conspirator 8. On or about October 14, 2013, while incarcerated, Welch's told an associate, I'm in the field. I'm beefing with guys. I'm at war. I'm a gangster. Welch's further stated that rival gang members would kill Welch's in order to advance their own status within their gang, because, according to Welch's, you know how much blood's on my hands. On or about October 18, 2013, Push used a social media account to post a photograph showing Push at the Riverview Court location, with two individuals flanking him and aiming firearms at the camera, next to which Push wrote, my little guy's going to kill for me ABG to the end, thereby informing his followers that junior gang members were willing to commit acts of violence on Push's behalf. The term ABG stands for anybody gets it, a violent subset of the New Jersey Grape Street Crips. On or about October 22, 2013, Blizzy posted another message on social media, disputing the rumor that Blizzy had purportedly cooperated with law enforcement, and indicating that Blizzy would be retaliating against the individual whom Blizzy believed to be responsible for disseminating the rumor by writing, specifically. This the last time I'm addressing this. For all you dudes who slander me and backbite, I never told, ratted, snitched on no one. No one on the planet is in jail because of me. For all you lames who saw this paperwork, know it's a fraud. Question my manhood, then come get a sample if I don't speak, please believe it's like that. You corny country dudes will never be on my level. I play by the rules. That's why a live dude will never respect the antics of you cowards. Google the names you pet detective, nothing adds up. Shortly thereafter, between on or about October 22, 2013, and on or about October 24, 2013, Blizzy used social media to show his followers the power that he held, and the vast number of gang members and associates whom he could mobilize, as the leader of the New Jersey Grape Street Crips, by posting several photographs showing Blizzy standing in front of dozens of members and associates of the New Jersey Grape Street Crips, including Welch's and Du Hai, and by writing, among other things, F with me, you know I got it. Literally in October 2013, Blizzy met with Anderson at the mall at Short Hills in Melbourne, New Jersey, in a meeting that had been set up by Anwar West, a member of the New Jersey Grape Street Crips, who was a close associate of Anderson. West attempted to broker a truce between Blizzy and Anderson. Al Malik Anderson himself turned to social media to spread rumors in the community before the meeting at the Short Hills Mall that accused Hamlet of being an informant. It wasn't true. But Hamlet soon found out that Anderson had himself been a cooperating informant for the Essex County Prosecutor's Office. I just put it on Instagram said Blizzy in court. Social media has a lot of benefits. Social media has a way to get people to understand like maybe a mood you were in or what you, like, see where you at the moment you might be in the park, it might got nice scenery, whatever the case may be, or even promote events. But I used it on that day to show that you trying to come at me when, all actuality, you the rat. The rad in this case being Anderson. Blizzy was a ghost and was virtually untraceable, except for social media, in which a number of clues pointed to him being a member of the Crips. No phone messages or calls linked him to any crimes. His name only came up during investigations. Sea Murder was still hunting down Anderson under the direction of Blizzy. On or about October 27, 2013, Sea Murder, Blue, Fresh, and Co-Conspirator 10 while driving in Fresh's black Jeep Cherokee SRT-8, went searching. Sea Murder held a Mac-11 submachine gun, equipped with a silencer, while another gunman wielded a Calico M960A mini submachine gun, and two others had handguns. They pulled up on a silver four-door porch at a red light on Wright Street. The porch belonged to Anderson. They swerved into the, what would be, oncoming traffic lane, and cut off the porch from making any moves. Afterwards, Sea Murder leaned out the window and started spraying the porch up with bullets. Although he couldn't see who was in the car because of the tinted windows, but it had to be Anderson. As Sea Murder was shooting the fully automatic Mac 11 at the car, the wielder of the calico was having issues, as the gun malfunctioned and wouldn't shoot a bullet out. Another person in the car began shooting with a handgun. Sea Murder was accidentally shot in the hand by a fellow gang member. Out of the corner of his eye, Sea Murder seen someone emerge from the bullet-ridden porch. Turns out, a woman, Sadia Gaines, was driving, and Anderson was in the right-hand passenger seat. The woman was Anderson's cousin. Sea Murder and the rest began making their escape before the police arrived. 
Fresh, Blue, and Cocon Sprayer 10, drove C-Murder to St. Michael's Hospital in Newark, New Jersey. C-Murder provided a false name to police who interviewed him about his gunshot wound. He said he obtained the wound while wrestling a gun from an assailant. Cops didn't believe his story and arrested him shortly after. Anderson and his cousin survived narrowly escaped and survived the shooting, but not without bullet wounds. On or about October 29, 2013, following the attempted murder, Blizzy posted on social media a postcard that stated, Rumors are carried by haters spread by fools and accepted by idiots. On or about November 3, 2013, C. Murder, while incarcerated at the Essex County Correctional Facility, told an associate. It's war time. I was hunting all week. Three days later, C. Murder, while incarcerated at the Essex County Correctional Facility, told an associate. Anderson and Gaines, would have been done if they would never hit me. I'm talking about they was done, like, like, literally, done, like, no coming back. C. Murder then said, Conspirator 10 saved them. Following the meeting between Blizzy and Anderson at the Short Hills Mall, which Anwar West had helped set up, Blizzy authorized and directed fellow gang members to kill West, among other reasons. He believed that West was too close to Anderson, and that West had been disloyal to him and the New Jersey Grape Street Crips. On or about November 12, 2013, Shooter lured West into a Jeep Cherokee, the same vehicle used in the previous shooting. Shooter purposely left West alone inside the Jeep Cherokee at or around the 6th Avenue location, Push walked over to the truck, stuck the gun through the window, and shot West once in the head. Push didn't have any personal problems with West, nor did he really know him. He claimed he did it strictly on orders from Blizzy. After the shooting, he threw the gun in the river. On or about November 12, 2013, Grimsley managed a heroin packaging operation on behalf of City, located in Newark. Inside the heroin mill, City, Grimsley, and others had stored kilos of heroin and numerous items used to cut and package heroin for distribution, including grinders, scales, rubber bands, tape, and glassine envelopes, with a stamp of Obamacare in red ink, so they were still getting money. Little did they know, Curtin and Stafford sold to D Confidential informants nearly $20,000 worth of heroin in separate transactions. Blizzy told Conspirator 4 that Green, the brother of Anderson, had to be killed. So on March 3, 2014, Fresh, driving a Jeep Cherokee SRT8 in which Blizzy was a passenger, pulled up next to a car driven by Green, which also had multiple passengers inside. Blizzy pointed a firearm at Green and the passengers inside the car, prompting Green to speed off in an attempt to escape. A short time later, after Blizzy had gotten out of Fresh's Jeep, Fresh located Green and began to chase another vehicle in which Green and several other individuals were driving. Green's second car crashed near the intersection of Irvine Turner Boulevard and Spruce Street. Numerous shots were fired from Fresh's Jeep in the direction of Green, injuring him. Wesley Childs, a passenger in Green's car, was killed and Velma Catino, an innocent bystander who was a passenger in one of the vehicles involved in the crash, was shot and killed. On or about April 28, 2014, Blizzy spoke by telephone with Conspirator 12, a member of the New Jersey Grape Street Crips, about collecting a debt that Conspirator 12 owed to Blizzy. On or about May 8, 2014, Blizzy received a telephone call from an individual during which the individual attempted to confirm that a third party had paid a sum of money to Blizzy, but Blizzy responded, I don't do no phone stuff, but, you done dumbed, it up meaning that Blizzy did not discuss his criminal activities over the telephone. The New Jersey Grape Street Crips would not cease their criminal activities, even when charged with crimes by federal law enforcement, by Du High stating specifically. F the feds, they ain't stopping me. They Trina bury me with all that time, prosecutor has it out for me. I ain't sitting in the county, in the pop bail, in the go to trial, in the pick 12, F these crackers, I ain't scared of no jail. 25 to life, I ain't tacking no L. On or about September 8, 2014, Blizzy posted on social media a photograph of the album cover of Do High and Mushi's mixtape. On or about October 3, 2014, during the celebration, Blizzy and other gang members filmed a video threatening a Chicago-based rapper, believed to be Chief Keith. During the video, Blizzy stated, This your boy Caster Troy. 103rd. Jordan Down. We got a message for you. We got a message. We Jersey. We got an issue for you, Chief. Conspirator 15 said, You disrespect my block. All head shots. I ain't playing with you. South over Sosa. Shoot on sight, play with me. Come through. 
We was waiting for you. We had the grips out and everything. Why you didn't come through? When Kakonspirator 15 used the phrases all head shots and shoot on sight he 39, meant that the Chicago-based rapper should be killed. By using the phrase we had the grips out Blizzy then pushed Kakonspirator 15 behind him, and, while approaching the camera, said, Jersey don't love you. You gets no money in my state. You gets no money in my state. F you chief. F you, chief. Blizzy, Kakonspirator 15, and the other gang members then flashed gang signs associated with the New Jersey Grape Street Crips. On or about March 17, 2015, during a trial at the Essex County Superior Court, Mushi attempted to intimidate the ICTIM-10 by having members of the New Jersey Grape Street Crips in the courtroom, while Victim 10 was called as a witness against Mushi. As a result of this intimidation, Victim 10 refused to testify against Mushi, and the charges against him had to be dismissed. Shortly after the charges were dismissed, during a telephone call with a fellow gang member, Mushi bragged, you know what, who, who you know cause ruckus on these mother effing streets, come home, do whatever the f they want, and still be out here son. On or about March 18, 2015, Mushi spoke with Du Hai, who was at the New Jersey Southern State Prison. During the call, Mushi told Du Hai about a dispute between Mushi, 40 at the time, and a younger member of the New Jersey Grape Street Crips from around the Georgia King Village public housing complex, dubbed The Ville. Mushi told Du Hai that Lizzie had put a conspirator 15 in charge of The Ville. Mushi stated, at the end of the day, if mother effin' mini me, Lizzie, and anybody say like, oh, this is what happened. Like y'all ain't gonna second guess, y'all ain't question that stuff or nothing, referring to the fact that other gang members would not question orders emanating from Blizzy or Welch's. On or about March 18, 2015, Mushi had a telephone conversation with Keem, in which Keem stated that Push needed $300 in US currency to make bail in a criminal case. After Keem told Mushi that Blizzy and Keem had each agreed to provide $100 each, Mushi agreed to provide $100, between at least in or around July 2013 and on or about May 5, 2015, Mushi and Du Hai engaged in multiple acts of heroin distribution to retail-level customers. On or about July 10, 2015, Push conducted a heroin transaction at or around the Riverview Court location. After the transaction, on or about July 10, 2015, Push possessed, among other things, one brick of heroin, and tried to run away from police officers, who ultimately apprehended him. About August 10, 2015, Blizzy used social media to post a video filmed at the Pennington Court location. During the video Blizzy stated, This, this is one of those places where if you ain't invited, you don't come to. Blizzy then stated, shout out to the homie Rare Izzo and 280's own boys, free my 71, y'all know what that is, Jersey. November 20, 2015, while detained at the Essex County Correctional Facility, Du High and two conspirators physically assaulted Victim 11 and Victim 12, in part, because Victim 11 and Victim 12 were associated with Anderson. This case was conducted under the auspices of the Organized Crime Drug Enforcement Task Force and the FBI's Safe Streets Task Force, a partnership between federal, state and local law enforcement agencies. The individuals involved in this story received life down to 12 years in prison. That's all for now. Stay low. Thanks for watching.